All right, so if you haven't been on the internet for the last 24 hours, you've probably missed uh, the information that Blackmagic have dropped a new camera. Actually, they've dropped like a bunch of stuff. It's been like an absolutely crazy day looking at all of the new releases. And um, there's a couple of things I'm super excited about. DaVinci Resolve 19 looks fantastic. Um, I've been procrastinating switching to DaVinci Resolve and I think this one might switch me over uh, from Premiere Pro. So uh, we're gonna hop into that one at some point in the future, but also they released a couple of cameras. The main one that interests me and probably a lot of you guys who are subscribed to my channel looking at sort of budget gear, now I recognize this is a $3,000 camera, so not budget to some people, but for what you're getting for $3,000, I think this is is an incredible offering. So this is a Blackmagic Pixis 6K. Um, now there's a couple of things I want to talk about. So when it comes to Blackmagic cameras, I've used the Pocket 4K, 6K and 6K Pro and I loved those cameras. Um, and like many other people, I was begging Blackmagic, please let's go for a box style camera. You know, that, that's what we want. And they finally delivered on that. Now, since then, I actually switched to Zcam. I've got an F6 and an M4, um, and I absolutely love them. I think they're great. And there's a couple of things about the Zcams that um, really have me locked into Zcam um, that I think, hopefully, potentially, maybe, this camera could bring me back over to Blackmagic. The biggest selling point for Blackmagic cameras has always been, well, first off, the image quality is fantastic. The UI, right, the, in the interface for the, uh, you know, the actual menus and the systems is just so simple and so easy. And obviously the integration with things like um, DaVinci Resolve and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a great system, it's a great setup. Um, and they just make really good cameras, uh, especially for the price point. So looking at the specs here, we're just gonna look over certain things about this camera. I'm gonna give my, my two cents on the matter um, as someone who's used a lot of these cameras. So let's let's talk through some of the specs, some of the things that we see on their website and see what it is offering. So it's called Pixis or Pix, Pix, yeah, Pixie, Pixis, Pixies, I don't know, but Kind of cool name, I like it. And you can just see by the image that it is a box style. Now it's a little longer than other uh, things. It looks like about the size of a, of an FX6, which I think is a really nice size. And it's got this really nice big monitor on the side, tons of buttons. Blackmagic just do such a great job with their, their interfaces. And we're gonna come back to the screen here in a little bit because I know that's been a little controversial. Um, I'm not a big fan of um, eyepieces or uh, viewfinders. I don't intend to use those. I just prefer monitors, but it's great that they have that as an option. And I think the USB-C is cool. I would love to see, uh, so, you know, if, if you can't see here, they basically use a USB-C cable for their, for their viewfinder. If they came out with a monitor that is powered and sends data by USB-C for this camera, that would be amazing. Could you mind like an external five to seven inch monitor all run through one cable? That'd be awesome. I would love it if they would do that, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, it's called the world's most riggable full frame digital film camera. We'll see uh, how riggable it actually is, who knows, but um, definitely looking good. So yes, it is the full frame. It basically seems to be the exact same camera as the full frame pocket where it wasn't called the pocket. I think it was called the, the 6K cinema camera or something like that. Um, so it's exactly the same sensor and I think all the same kind of image and, and processors and stuff like that. So there's a couple of problems with that camera in my opinion. No, I haven't actually used it. So I would definitely go check out any videos that people have made about that camera. But dynamic range seems a little bit lower. I think it's like 13 stops, which it'd be nice to bump that up to like, you know, 14, 15. Um, and rolling shutter isn't the best performance, but most of what I do is studio work and stuff with tripods. So, you know, rolling shutter isn't a big problem for me within my workflow. Other people who film a lot of, you know, automotive stuff or other things, rolling shutter is a much bigger deal. So depends on your workflow and what you need, but rolling shutter is not a huge problem for me personally. So yeah, I mean, the sensor seems fantastic. Uh, it does come with an L mount, an EF mount or a PL mount. That's one of the things that I'm a little disappointed in, mainly because almost all the lenses I have are Sony. So if I was to invest in this, I'd have to get all new lenses. A little disappointing, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, uh, one of the things, you know, a lot of Blackmagic and a lot of new cinema cameras or even, you know, the Lumix cameras are doing is giving you the option of open gate, uh, which I think is becoming a lot more popular. So I'm excited to see, you know, where that kind of goes. For a long time, we were all in this sort of ultra wide, you know, the, the 2 four one aspect ratios, but you know, the hipsters are all coming out with their open gate style stuff, which I think is, is kind of fun. Um, so yes, as I said, there's three versions, the PL, uh, locking EF, locking EF is great. If you can lock your lens into place on the camera, it just provide so much peace of mind. And, you know, Zcams do that with their EF mounts. Um, I think Viltrox are coming out with a new version of the EF mount for uh, Zcam, which has a locking EF mount, which could be kind of cool. I don't know if that's actually happening, but it showed up on their website and then just disappeared. So hopefully we get it at some point. And L mount, so for the uh, the L mount people out there, um, I think this is gonna be a fantastic pairing with the S5 II, right? If you've got an S5 II and you need a, another camera, like an A camera and a, in a cinema, cinema style body, this could be the one to go for, especially if you've got L-mount lenses. 
Um, so yes, it says shoot incredible high dynamic range. You know, the dynamic range is 13 stops and that's fine. I think for some, you know, for some people who are shooting on Sony cinema cameras or some of their, you know, Blackmagic higher end stuff or the Komodos, 13 is really not enough these days. 13 stops is definitely on the lower end of what I would want. Um, dual gain ISO, you know, new standard. That's kind of a big thing these days. And um, we're going to see how the, the low light performance is on this camera. Hopefully it's good. Again, you can go and check out the, the pocket 6K the full frame 6K camera that they came out with. Now this is one of the things that's kind of been controversial in, in the design is the large four inch LCD monitor. I'm actually really excited about this, right? So a lot of people are like, why doesn't it flip out? Well, uh, w what most people do, as you can see here, is uh, usually on a, on a film production, you, you know, if your camera's on a tripod, the first AC or the camera operator, uh, all of the, the settings and the buttons and everything are gonna be on the side of the camera for the person who's sitting beside it, looking at it, on the on the tripod. So that's exactly where you would want a monitor if your camera is on sticks, right? If it's on a tripod and you're wanting to operate it from the side, you've got a first AC. I, I think it's totally fine. Um, and even if you are going handheld and you need to change some settings, you know, if you've got a nice handle on the right hand side, it's all here, right? I don't. I really don't think this is going to be that bad. Most people are going to rig this out with a monitor on top anyway, so you know, to, to have to just turn and see it on the side, I don't think is really the end of the world. Um, now, would it be nice if it flipped out like the Ursa cameras? Sure. No, yes. I mean, a lot of people have been complaining about this. I really don't think it's going to be that big of a problem um, in, in the future. Uh, and it leaves a lot of the space open on the top. As you can see, they've got that big handle here um, that, you know, they can't stick a monitor there if there's a big handle there. But anyway, tell me your thoughts on, on the monitor down below. Uh, this is an interesting thing that they have, this little customizable side plate. I quite like that. I think that's going to be kind of fun. Just more versatility, more options for rigging is always a good thing for any camera operators um, and, and especially rig builders like myself. You've got to love a good rig build, uh, especially having the versatility of this to, you know, just so many options. I'm, I'm excited. So they moved to CF Express uh, and they, obviously you can record to SSDs. That's kind of like been a big thing for uh, Blackmagic cameras for a long time is, you know, being able to record to external SSDs. It's a much more affordable way of recording. It's always a way that I prefer to do it. But if you want, you know, security and making sure that you're getting everything recorded well, you're going to want to go with some high quality CF Express uh, cards um, like they like they have here. Those pro-grade ones might be the one of the ones that they recommend. You know, they're, they're going to come out and tell you all of their recommendations for uh, media. So it's always best to buy the media that they recommend, even if it's a little expensive. You know, if you're buying a cinema camera, you, you're you probably filming things that you can't risk having your, your card die. So make sure you buy the right stuff. It's got Blackmagic RAW. It's got all, all the normal things. Again, the internals are going to be the same as the, the 6K uh, full frame camera that they came out with a while ago, which honestly is kind of sad because I think that camera is probably dead now. Uh, they probably shouldn't have released that in my opinion, but that's okay. Um... Uh, the live sync to cloud thing is really interesting, right? So you just plug your phone in, send all of your, your stuff straight to straight to DaVinci Resolve is a, is a kind of cool idea. Um, and yeah, a nice little viewfinder. Again, I think it'd be so cool if they release a monitor that could replace this instead. If, if you're not a viewfinder person, a monitor uh, that runs off of one USB-C cable would be amazing. All right, now here we have a couple of things, right? So we've got that full frame 6K sensor with the L mount here. One of the things you might notice is on the front here, it's got like four little screw holes. Um, and it kind of makes me wonder if it is possible to interchange the mount, you know, so they have the EF, they have the PL. Maybe you can buy those separately and change them yourself, much like you can with the Z cams. And if that's true, maybe there's going to be nothing stopping a company like Viltrox from releasing an EF mount. So here, this is the M4, right? So my F6 is being used at the moment. But this is the M4 and I've attached a Sony E mount to it, which means that I can use all of my Sony lenses on this camera, which is fantastic because that just gives you so much more versatility. I still think the Sony E mount system has the most amount of lenses available. You know, they just have a ton of lens options available. Um, L mount still to me is just a little limited personally. They're getting there, they're doing great, but um, I have all Sony glass, so I'm gonna be biased because I want to use all of my Sony glass on this camera um, and I can't unless, you know, they come out with like a uh, Sony E mount. I, I'm gonna be doubtful that that will happen, um, but you never know. Uh, we, you know, people said that about the, the Z cam as well and then Viltrox stepped in and made the, made the emote for them. So we'll see if that happens. That'd be really cool if it does. And then the other thing here uh, I'd like to point out is this battery. So the, these batteries, the BPU batteries, I think they were uh, C100 or C200, I can't remember exactly. Um, they seem like good batteries, but I kind of wish that they just stuck with the NPF batteries. I know that it limits you on like what kind of information you can get from the battery to the camera, but they're just so readily available and so cheap 
um, and you know easily adaptable to things like V mount. So like even on the back of here, I just have a simple V mount adapter um, for this camera. Uh, and it would be kind of nice if we could do the same thing here, but not the end of the world. I think the Komodo uses the same batteries, um, but uh, we'll we'll have to see what the battery life is going to be like with this camera. Um, and that's going to be a theme, right? So this is kind of what I want to come back to: is there's still a lot of question marks around this camera. I've seen a lot of people online here like. I've already put in my order, that's okay. But what I'm gonna do and what I'm probably gonna encourage you to do as well is maybe just have a little bit of patience. Just wait a little while until we see a little bit more about this camera. Um, you know, it's they've said things like there might be some autofocus type of systems in here. Um, we've got this battery, we don't know how long exactly this is going to last. You know, it says it, that it gives you over three hours on a single charge, but again, we just, we're going to have to wait and see, you know, test of the dynamic range, test of the audio features, yeah, you know, it's got SDI options, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of really great things about this camera and I'm super excited about it, don't get me wrong. A lot of people are complaining that there's no internal NDs, but I really don't mind that. I, you know, I've got decent screw on filters that do the job. And I know a lot of people don't want to use those, but I would rather have to use a screw on filter uh, than have internal NDs that maybe have some IR pollution. Like even the new Sony Burano seems to have pretty severe IR pollution problems with their NDs and that's like a super expensive camera so I don't mind not having the internal NDs I can just add those on on the lenses to me that's not the end of the world if if that's a huge problem for you so be it but I think a lot of people are maybe blowing that one out of the water a little bit so for me the main thing that I I, I want to say about this camera is maybe just wait a little bit okay a lot of people have maybe put in pre-orders and are really excited about that and you know if you're if you're working on a big productions and you got a lot of money to throw at these sorts of things go for it right this is a, this is a pretty cheap camera for you know bigger film companies absolutely go for it but you know if you're if this is would be like your a cam the best camera that you can afford i'd say hold off just a little bit let's wait until some reviewers get their hands on this camera to test it you know just so that we can wait and see what kind of rigging options there are if they're going to make any sort of monitors or you know what the image quality is is going to be like which it should be the same as the 6k uh, cinema camera that they came out with all of that kind of stuff to me it does seem like an exciting camera i want to get it i'm probably going to buy one but I think just a little bit of patience until we see actually what it's like hands-on is going to be like. It's easy to look at these web pages and make a decision, right? Yes, I'm going to buy it. No, I hate it, right? People are very quick to make assumptions, but I think what we got to do is just wait a little bit and wait to see what kind of things that this camera can actually provide for each shooter. It might be right for you. It might not. A little bit of patience is always good. But overall, I think it's a very exciting camera. And, and you know, I'm very excited to see it. It very well easily could sway me away from Zcam just because I love the, the UI, I love the system, I love Blackmagic cameras in general, the image quality, everything I love out of these, but I just have a couple of little question marks that I'm gonna wait and see uh, what's gonna happen. It can be very quick and easy to hop on the bandwagon and buy a brand new $3,000 camera before knowing anything about it. I'd encourage just a touch of patience uh, and wait and see what some reviewers have to say. But overall, I think the main complaints that people have about this are the, the screen on the side that's not flippy, I don't think that's really a big problem. Again, if you've got it on a on a tripod on sticks and you've got a first AC looking and controlling the side of your camera, that's perfect. That's kind of what you want. And even for solo shooters, you know, it's right there. I mean, it's the difference from there to there. You know, it's it's really not that big of a deal in my opinion. You know, one of the other big complaints is the lack of ND filters. To me, that's just not a problem. Um, people are very upset over that for some reason, but it's a $3,000 camera. You know, for a $3,000 camera, I don't mind. I, I, I think a lack of internal NDs is okay for that sort of price. Um, and then the last thing for me to see is like the battery life. How, how are those BPU batteries gonna do? Um, are they going to be affordable? Are they, you know, they're kind of hard to come by sometimes these days. And or am I going to be able to adapt it to V-mount easily? Because V-mount's just better, in my opinion. I'd love it if they just had a V-mount on there, but not the end of the world. But I want to know what you think. This is a new camera. It's just come out. It's very exciting. And a lot of people are very, very heated over this, right? Some people think it's fantastic. Some people hate it. I want to know what your thoughts are. But if you've enjoyed this video, if you're excited for this camera, hit the like button, drop a comment down below, or maybe even subscribe as we continue to build this channel. I appreciate all of you for doing so. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.